we'll talk uh, something about uh, Shannon's entropy and uh, some comments on the generalizations. <coughs> Information transmission takes place in different ways. When we read newspaper books, we talk on phone, listen to TV, attend some lecture the way for last 12 days you people are doing. So always we are having this uh, transformation uh, of information. We are just transferring information from some place to other. So information is carried over from one place to another. This is the observation. When we seek information, we seek information only when there we have more than one way of happening some event. If we know that something happens in a unique way, then there is no question of uncertainty and uh, no information is called for as such. <coughs> uh, <coughs> you can see today whether it is uh, uh, today, depending on today, whether uh, we can say anything about tomorrow's weather. Uh, we don't know whether it is rainy day or sunny day. So there is some kind of uncertainty, and uh, that's why. Uh, two possible ways, so there is some kind of uncertainty. <coughs> uh, <coughs> information received by occurrence of some event is same as the amount of uncertainty prevailed before its occurrence. But we have some, I, I have some uncertainty about something, this has happened, so I know what has exactly happened. So now this information I have with me, so there is no uncertainty now. Uh, <coughs> these are the two basic uh, uh, one, the one paper, the second one is uh, Shannon, this is a research paper, and first one is book. These are the two basic things uh, started together in 1948. Uh, this Shannon entropy is uh, uh, mostly famous, and uh, although the idea is the same, but Weiner used it in a different uh, way. And uh, if you see the paper and the book, in Weiner's book, there is no reference to Shannon, and in Shannon's paper, there is no reference to Weiner. So this clearly tells that they have done it independently <coughs> without uh, discussing this thing. So if you see these uh, pictures, so you see this is uh, this one. Here you have more on, more entropy. So and here you have less uh, entropy. Uh, I, will, I will define uh, formally what is entropy. <coughs> but before that, you see the different places where uh, entropy is used. In physical sciences, in communication theory, in language, biological sciences, information theory, Pattern recognition, fuzzy analysis, what not, social sciences, economics, everywhere, finance, and many more. Okay. Uh, you will find applications of entropy in different places. Now let us see this particular example. <coughs> Suppose E is one event, and the event is that you will get a job, and P is the probability of that. If P is 0 0.01, that means you have very rare chance to get the job. And one friend comes to me and tells that uh, you have got the job. That eventually this will be your reaction. I didn't expect that I will get the job. But if my probability is 0.9, that I am almost sure that I will get it. And if you tell me that uh, you have got the job, I'll say, okay, thanks. Because I was very much sure that I will get the, <coughs> get the job. <coughs> so this clearly tells one thing that if I consider this uh, HP uh, entropy, then you know, this should be a decreasing function of p. If probability is more, then entropy will be less. That way I have uh, uncertainty is less. If we have two events, e1 and e2, with probability p1 and p2, they are independent events, then occurrence of two together has entropy hp1, p2, which will be same as hp1 plus hp2. Okay? Because two, uh, two events occurring together, has entropy HP1, P2. They are occurring separately. It has probability uh, entropy HP1 and HP2. So taking together, this is HP1 plus HP2. <coughs> H1 should be 0, because if uh, probability is 1 that I know that so this is a certain event, then there is no uncertainty. So there is no entropy. Entropy will be 0. We transform very simply. P is a to the power minus x. So your HP is in terms of x. I am trying to write as phi x. And obviously, based on the properties of H, whatever we have written, your phi should satisfy these conditions. That phi x is a continuous uh, function in X because small information once I get, then I will have some kind of uh, uh, less of, uh, in my uncertainty, whatever prevailed before I get this information. So this is a continuous function in X. Phi x1 is less than or equal to phi x2, when x1 is less than or equal to x2. Phi x1 plus x2 is phi x1 plus phi x2. Everything is coming from 
H p once you transform this and phi 0 is 0. <coughs> Uh, I am just uh, quickly trying to tell you uh, this derivation of Shannon's entropy. So clearly whatever we had here this uh, phi x1 plus phi x2 is phi x1 plus phi x2 from here you have for any positive integer m phi m will be m times phi 1. So writing m as n times uh, m by n I can nicely write that phi m is n times phi m by n. So this gives phi m by n is m by n phi 1 phi 1. So phi x is if I write uh, this uh, m by n is n x. So it is phi x is x times phi x phi 1 for any positive rational number. I have taken this in the form m by n. Now since uh, <coughs> we know that uh, real number set is uh, dense. So I can take uh, any sequence converging con you take any real number. So I can always get on sequence of uh, uh, rational numbers converging to that particular real number. So with that particular thing if I take any x then eventually this x then I can write phi x is x times phi 1 uh, through this uh, sequential argument. So <coughs> then what we get is uh, your phi x is coming out to be x times c where c is my phi 1. So now I come back to hp this was my transformation. So eventually I am getting hp is minus c times log p with base sum a. So any log, any base is fine. So since uh, entropy is used in communication theory, it was started with uh, the base 2 binary. Uh, but nowadays whenever we use this in reliability, we don't take 2 because we take uh, base E. The reason is that if we take base E and base 2, this is only a difference of uh, this, uh, your constant multiple. <coughs> so HP is minus log 2, I take uh, C equal to 1 without any loss of generality and we take a equal to 2. So this will come like this. Now let us take uh, the event E. E is the event. So it may occur or it may not occur. Probability of occurrence is P, non-occurrence is 1 minus P. So before occurring or occurrence or non-occurrence of E, I have some kind of uncertainty. So expect a information whatever you get after occurrence of the event E is HP1 plus 1 minus p h p 1 h p h p plus 1 minus p h 1 minus p and uh, so generalizing this thing to p 1 p 2 p n if I have a set uh, p 1 p 2 p n then I can the same way you can generalize it to this thing. This is eventually what is called Shannon entropy that was done by Shannon. <coughs> uh, <coughs> obviously uh, this maximum p 1 p 2 p n will be at 1 by n. Uh, this is just a simple your entropy function which are maximizing it uh, over the restriction that uh, each pi is greater than or equal to 0 and sigma pi is 1. Under this restriction you will get a maximum of hp is this which is quite natural because uh, if you have uniform distribution then eventually you have the maximum entropy over there. <coughs> most uncertain, most uncertain situation. Uh, this is an important thing before we proceed uh, I would like to tell you the thing is that whenever you say chp this is actually uh, not the argument this is, uh, because whenever I have some other distribution hq then I will write hq here. So that is what we have written here that it is eventually a level and not the argument. Uh, <coughs> so these are uh, uh, sorry uh, these three things eventually you have seen that uh, I started with couple of uh, uh, reasonable axioms but eventually Shannon started with these three things. These are eventually Shannon's uh, axioms. From there, Shannon derived the Shannon entropy. Uh, <coughs> Rennie. Alfred Rennie told that even that Shannon gave one set of entropy, which gave one entropy. And according to Rennie, that uh, you have separate sets of uh, postulates, which will eventually converge to the same entropy that is possible. And one such is given by uh, your uh, Fenstein. This is another set. This is uh, completely different from your what uh, Shannon has given. But in spite of that, this will also give the same entropy here. Some modification uh, Reni has done. And uh, with that, Reni eventually the last point uh, Reni has uh, changed and he has got this kind of entropy. So <coughs> this is again postulate. In a, B, C, D, D has been changed by D prime. Now A, B, C and D prime will give you 
this kind of entropy. This is what is called Rene entropy. Uh, <coughs> you can see that as alpha tends to 1, this is going to Shannon entropy, H alpha B is going to HP. So these are very basic things. Now, <coughs> in 1928, long before 1948, Hartley got this kind of thing. This is another kind of entropy. And uh, this is, if, if you see that this Hartley entropy is the function mapping from N to R. This we satisfy this kind of thing, these three postulates. This is the function which will give you HP equal to log N. So what I am trying to tell is, whatever entropy we see here, uh, behind that, there are a set of postulates. Uh, actually, Rennie did uh, not for your probability distribution, but this called for a generalized probability distribution. If sigma PI is less than one, then also we can define entropy, and this is the way actually Rennie started. <coughs> uh, this is something, again, Varma has defined, uh, just by reparameterization, so I don't want to uh, give time on that. But you see, Harba and Charvard, they have defined this kind of entropy, with these are the different uh, set of postulates. So there are different kinds of postulates, and we are getting different kinds of entropy. <coughs> Now, A.M. <coughs> Awad, he has eventually got a couple of uh, limitations of Shannon entropy. That you see here, this 0 0.25, 0 0.25 log 0.25 and 0.5 log 0.25, the value is the same, but the probability is different. So clearly, the entropy of a system as weight and average, sigma pi log pi is not the correct way of defining entropy. This is actually Awad's observation. He has <coughs> also given a different example here that P is this, a different set. E is a different set having same HP and HQ. So here distributions are not identifiable in terms of entropy. These are a couple of drawbacks. And that's why again our has defined uh, different kinds of entropy. So again, I'm not going into details of this. When we, when we come to continuous part of entropy, then simply you re remove sum by integration and your P by your corresponding density, this is the way the density, the different kinds of entropies are developed for continuous random variables. <coughs> Here the problem is, for continuous random variable, your entropy can be negative. This another drawback, if you go the way, just replacing your sum by integration and uh, your probability mass function by probability density function. <coughs> another problem is here, if you see B, HP should have been, HY should have been HX. But here we see that HY is HX plus some constant if X and Y are continuous random variable, which should not be because here it is just a transformation, some linear transformation. That means I have something I have measured in, in different units, that's why I am getting different uh, entropy, which is not the correct uh, thing. So this is another drawback of Shannon entropy. <coughs> after that, people have defined, up to that it was perfectly fine, but after that in the literature, people have defined cumulative residual entropy, past entropy, I am not going to all those things. What I am trying to tell is that all those entropy, if you see in the literature, all those have been defined just by, uh, just to remove the uh, limitations of Shannon entropy. For example, this cumulative residual entropy has been defined by replacing the density function by corresponding survival function. As a result, the, your uh, limitations of Shannon entropy gone. But question is, once we replace this density function by cumulative distribution function, if we try to derive this thing, what should be the underlying postulate? And even if we get some postulates, whether these postulates are at all feasible. If they are not feasible, then discussing this kind of entropy has no meaning, because underlying postulates are not feasible. Same way, the others, uh, your entropies are defined. So I would like to pose this question to you, that you pick up any of the entropies, whatever is listed here, you just give a Google search, you get a lot of papers on that. So the thing is, based on all those things which have been derived just to get rid of the limitations of Shannon entropy, are these things really something feasible? Because that thing will be just start from this other way, not starting from the postulate, you get the entropy. The thing should be start from the entropy and try to get what are the possible underlying postulates because uh, Rennie has already told that there, 
you have different sets of postulates giving the same entropy. So, start from this and get at least one set of uh, postulates and see whether these are feasible or not. If they are, they are not feasible, what kind of changes you should do the over there so that it becomes feasible. And once you do that, again you have to come back to here that this cumulative residual entry, what will be the corresponding change over here and then the mathematics will follow. Thank you very much. Hmm.